evening. Again, I'm Ingrid Corey from the Northampton Area League of Women Voters. We are, um, we are resuming our forum on the Community Preservation Act, and I am joined now with the four candidates for the Community Preservation Committee. So um, we will begin by hearing from each one of them. They will have three minutes to introduce themselves and to, um, to tell us why, why uh, they should have our votes. And then I have some uh, questions that were prepared by, by a committee on the League in advance that I'll be asking of each of the candidates and they'll have opportunities to respond. So, um, so Jim, welcome. <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself and you can... Hi, thank you everyone for coming this evening. My name is Jim Dorfer. A brief background on myself. I'm a Florence resident, married for nearly 24 years to the same <coughs> lovely bride. Uh, two children raised in the Northampton school system. My educational background includes a, a BA from UMass, where I met my bride, and an MBA from Boston College with a finance concentration. Uh, my background, uh, professional background, includes service with the Navy as a Naval Flight Officer, um, where I was uh, also a combat decorated veteran of the Persian Gulf War. Um, following the Navy, I worked primarily as a business consultant that specialized in process improvement and uh, um, uh, business improvement. I'm currently retired due to my uh, um, battle with ALS, and please forgive me if uh, I uh, struggle with some words. Just give me a signal and I'll, uh, I'll re-say. All that pride went out months ago. Um, I'm an extremely active volunteer within the community, serving not only on the CPC com committee, but the Recreation Commission as well. Additionally, I'm uh, uh, an executive board member of the Northampton Youth Soccer Association, Northampton Youth Lacrosse, and uh, the Northampton Lily. Uh, of which I coach in all three as well. Um, I am a past recipient of the Elk Citizen of the Year for other volunteerism, and outside of the community, I counsel other veterans dealing with ALS. Uh, during my tenure with the CPC, I've tried to blend all these experiences in meeting different people um, throughout the community coaching children of many different economic uh, circumstances as well as politically. So I am floating through the community frequently and, and here, listen to their um, concerns about the CPC committee. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Mary, could you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Mary Goddiener. And first, I'd like to thank the League for hosting this forum on the Community <coughs> Preservation Act and giving us candidates the opportunity to introduce ourselves and answer your questions. More important than my candidacy is that Northampton vote to keep the Community Preservation Act. We need this money. Our federal, state, and local governments no longer have the resources to maintain the quality of life I think we've all gotten used to and taken for granted in this country. So how can we turn down what Bill Dwight calls <laughs> magic money for the very small cost to each of us? If we look at the success of the first five years, Projects we never could have funded that you just heard about. The Forbes and Lilly Library, the Mineral Hills Conservation Area, the rehabilitation of a deteriorated building on King Street, which now is affordable housing with commercial space, and of course, the Bean Allard Farm with its recreation areas. All residents of the city 
should believe that their elected CPC reps do in fact represent them. I will work to see that this is in fact the case. And for starters, as a new member, I'm going to suggest that every other meeting be in Florence and that we as a committee reach out to help citizens that are interested to figure out whether and how to apply for CPA funding so that it's available to more people. I think that the most important mindset that your CPC representative can bring to the table is impartiality towards all projects, no advocacy toward any particular funding area. And if I'm elected, I will resign my seat on the Valley CDC board to eliminate any conflicts of interest toward affordable housing projects. Our CPC processes must be fair and they have to conform to best practices. I'll draw on my legal background to make sure that the findings for the funding decisions that the CPC makes are legally sound, which means that they're well supported by discussion by all the members, that they show clear reasoning by the committee members, and that they're not just a vote with no accountability or record to support the funding decision. I believe in the CPA very strongly. I worked hard to get it passed five years ago, and I believe in what it's done and can continue to do for Northampton. So I say, let's continue to improve it, and let's try to make it work for more of us. Marlene? Hello everyone, my name is Marlene Morin. Um, tonight I'll pre present to you some ideas that I have for solutions for some of the problems that have been identified. There aren't many, but before I do that I would like to thank um, all the people who worked so hard to bring the CPA to this community, um, all the people who worked for the first year as committee members and spent the whole first year writing the bylaws uh, and the different laws and developing the policies and procedures. They're all volunteers and, and they did a really good job. Um, when I heard about the petition to repeal the CPA, I started to do some digging. I started to really dig into the website and see what maybe, if I could find out what some of the problems are. Uh, there are some problems, but it comes not so much with the um, deciding who would receive the funding and what projects were appropriate, I think that the problems come towards the end of the project. And if I become a committee member, I would advocate that the bylaws be amended because they don't address this issue, but they can be amended um, by a majority vote of the committee members, and I think they should be amended to include uh, an annual accounting of every project. I think the CPC should um, have the power to ask for um, an accounting of every source of funding for a project, just so that the CPC can evaluate um, whether this is an efficient use of funds. Presently, um, supposedly there is some reporting that's due back, but when I went going through, when I started going through the website and looking at each project and looking at the final uh, report, you know, I. I didn't find it. In fact, in one recent project, I found that the contract was there, but it wasn't signed. Um, and I'm a lawyer, I don't know if you know that, but we kind of like to have the contract signed. <laughs> it helps. So the contract wasn't signed, and there was also a clause in the contract that they would put a sign in front of the project saying the sources of all their funding. And I had noticed before I saw that clause in the contract that there was no sign in front of that project. In fact, at one of the recent CPC meetings, there was a discussion about should we require that in the contract. And now I understand why, because the people who present the projects are writing the contracts. I think maybe the CPC uh, committee needs, needs to be more involved in that. But um, I have 30 seconds left. I, I've been a resident in Northampton for 37 years. I live on Florence Road. I became involved. <coughs> Uh, in all of this, when I became involved with the bean farm, and I have to correct the newspaper, they said I helped write the bylaws, I wrote the bylaws, I wrote the articles of organization. It was my idea um, to form a nonprofit, and I asked Lily Longbar to be the president. Nobody knows that. So I'm, kind of, I'm very proud of Grow Food Northampton. I did not do any of the fundraising, which is the most amazing part about uh, the bean <coughs> project. So I just wanted everyone to know it was my idea. 
Hi, I'm Dave Rosting. I live on the and I'm also an attorney, so we've got some overlap here. Don't hold that against us. In a row. Uh, thank you, the League, for hosting tonight's forum, for giving all of us an opportunity to introduce ourselves to you. Thank all of you for showing up and showing a commitment to Northampton and showing that you care about our community. It's one that I also care very deeply about, and that's why I'm running for a seat on the CPC. I strongly support the CPC. I think it serves a pivotal function in our community. It safeguards and upholsters some of the key features that make Northampton so incredibly desirable, and it also strives to make it livable for everybody. One of the things that I most appreciate, and you heard earlier in the forum about CPC, is its emphasis on community-initiated projects, partnerships, and also we'll call it cost sharing because leverage funds seem to confuse people. But those are really important, and in a short amount of time, it's really done a lot of good for our community, and I hope that we can continue that. With all that said, CPC, in order for it to be successful and also be embraced wholly by the community, <clears throat> needs to have a fair process. It needs to spend its money sensibly, and it needs to have a predictable outcome. And it also needs to reflect the community's desires. I think to a large part it's done that. There's always room for improvement. Um, to, to me, in order to accomplish that, it means we have to have criteria that are workable and are unambiguous. It means following the process, as Mary alluded to, making sure that we maintain impartiality, the way we conduct our business and conduct it professionally, making uh, decisions that are supported and supportable and that we clearly articulate in writing. Uh, and most of all, continue the, the process for public participation and involvement. So what do I bring to the table? I'm also an attorney. Uh, I've got 20 years of government service as a wildlife biologist, as a, a clerk for Supreme Court in one of our states. Also, most recently, the last 10 years or so, uh, an environmental attorney working for US EPA, as well as for US Department of the Interior representing Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, and attorneys who sometimes have a bad reputation. I hope that it's not <laughs> uh, But we bring a really important skill set, I think, especially to the CPC. And the, it's an analytic uh, ability. It's a fact-finding that allows, would allow us to uh, evaluate whether or not a project would be successful in an area where we're blending a lot of different um, projects. We've got... Um, a lot of different intersecting laws and understanding those laws and how they interrelate and seeing where the, the process is and where the weaknesses are is really important. And also making defensible decisions. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot in my career where, where things go awry, where we don't have a justification or we don't have support, and I think it's really important. And finally, as an elected position, you know, all of us would be responsible to you, being responsible and responsive.
by definition don't have expertise in a particular area, or if we happen to have it from our background, that's fine, but we don't, you know, I have to disagree a little bit with what you said there, is that we're not advocates for any positions. We don't act as applicants for any particular area. It's very important for us to be impartial, and I think it's also important for uh, the elected members especially to hear what the other members, particularly the appointed members, have to say about different projects and take uh, advantage of their expertise as representatives. So I'd have to say that I think impartiality to all projects is probably one of the most important features. And I also think a, a commitment to uh, best practices to make sure that we do have uh, full discussions is key. And uh, I guess I'll, I'll add one more thing just to emphasize what I said before. As an elected member, we do represent the public and I think we need to get out there and talk more with the public. So I'm, one of the things that I've heard about the, the CPA projects is that they tend to go to the same people all the time. Well, those people know how to make applications, so let's get out there and help other people learn how to make the applications so that we can have a broader variety uh, within the uh, purview of the CPA criteria. Thank you. <coughs> uh, I think the most important quality um, will be the willingness to work very hard. Um, I've noticed since I've been investigating and getting ready for this hearing or this meeting and interviews with the, the press, how much work the people on the committees have to do. Um, and that might explain why the, the website didn't have the signed contract or didn't have the annual accountings if there are any. But I think that if I was a committee member, I would take particular interest in find, and that would be my work, is to, um, to look for those loose ends as a lawyer that I'm accustomed to looking at every detail. Um, I think it's important to look at all those contracts because I think also an open, an open bidding process would allow um, more of the young people in this community to be involved. Um, I know from talking to the young people in this community, they don't have jobs. Um, if we had a, a, an open bidding process, we could be creative. And as lawyers, we know, with this statute, it's so poorly written, we could be so creative with the bylaws of this uh, committee that we could create situations where we could do more than what we think. We think we're confined to just these uh, projects we've been doing, but there's so much more we can do. Uh, we could be the first city in the state who um, learns how to use uh, some of these funds for the substance abuse and the homeless people that uh, I see every day as, a, as the um, paper company defense attorneys. So, um, I meet them all, the homeless people, drug addicted, substance abuse, even kids from the best families in the community who played all the sports you could imagine. I've represented them and talked to them, and they're in treatment centers in Boston. <coughs> so I was thinking of how we could use some of our affordable housing to get them back home, closer to home, and maybe get them a job that's better than a coffee shop, too. I think we could use CPA funds in that creative way. So uh, I think creativity is another important quality. Uh, I, I think I'm going to address this in two parts. The first is the kind of in general, because the question was geared towards what the CPC members need to have, what was going to make them effective, not just those of us on, on the stage who are going to be potentially your elected representatives. I, I, I think the CPC was intentionally designed, and it's a state act, it was intentionally designed with a lot of safeguards and checks and balances. One of the most important ones is people's expertise. Um, coming, uh, you know, if it's a board appointment, whether it's the rec department, whether it's the planning board, whether it's conservation commission, they're all coming in with their perspectives. The purpose of creating that safeguard is to ensure that as projects go through the process that we're aware of the different hurdles that they're going to face before each of our governmental uh, boards and that we can assess what's going to happen. So I think their expertise is actually very relevant. I think the other important part is that we respect each other's expertise that we have open ears and that we listen and that the people on the CPC work in a collaborative fashion. Uh, the, the adjectives that come to mind for me are kind of uh, responsive, responsible, available, uh, both to the public and to one another during the meetings. Um, also, they need to be prepared. I mean, you look, if you go to the website and you look at the amount of information that the board members have to 
assimilate, digest, you know, a lot of them, everyone's on there on a volunteer basis, but in order to fully evaluate it, you have to dedicate the time and be prepared. Uh, they also need to be respectful, and as some of the other folks here uh, mentioned, they really need to be able to market the CPC in order for people to embrace it, in order to get a wider array of projects coming through the door. People really under, need to understand the process, and they have to be willing to entertain the questions. Um, Mary, I'll start with you for the next question, and then we'll work our way around. Um, this, this next question uh, regarding CPA support to affordable housing has two parts. Um, first, what community needs does the affordable housing component of the CPA address in Northampton? And second, describe how the CPA makes a difference in meeting the housing needs of members of the Northampton community. That's a long one. Yeah, it is. So, just for the benefit of everybody out there, too, what community needs does the affordable housing component of the CPA address in Northampton? Well, I think the most important thing that it does is that it allows people of all income levels to stay in Northampton. That's what affordable house, what a affordable housing component does, so that it doesn't uh, gentrify and price out uh, lower income people. That's very important. It's not just about housing homeless people. Uh, that's certainly very important, but it's about keeping uh, lower income families uh, in the city so that we have that mix. So I remember talking to um, Dan Cuso and uh, used to own the East Side Grill, who said that uh, when people could afford to live in East in Northampton, he never lost a day's work from his wait staff because they all lived in the city. And then once people got priced out of the city, they stopped showing up on snow days and things like that. I mean, that's like a direct result of affordability. So I'd have to say that that's. Um, one of the most important community needs and, and housing the homeless, of course, is, is very important. Uh, and I'm, how much time do I have? Is it three minutes for each of these? Two. Or two for each. Two, two, two minutes. minutes. Two, two and two. The whole thing, but two. Okay. I know. Oh, okay. So there's something that, I, that I'm going to say that's sort of on this point, but maybe not exactly. But I think it's really important how the CPA makes a difference, meaning the housing needs. I want to address that by... Um, something that I've heard people say, which is going towards the type of people that go into um, the housing for the homeless and that they can cause problems in the community. Uh, I actually heard this from one of the Florence merchants. And I, I want to say that anyone who goes into housing for the homeless facilities is vetted by a social services agency and recommended by them and has worked with them for six months and is determined to be sober, doesn't have, um, a, 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 is not an addict and does not have a criminal uh, background and when they go into the house they continue working with the social services agency and are monitored and this is really important. These are referred people who continue to work with the agency. So I think that's an important contribution that um, these housing units can, can give Northampton to help these people have a life. And uh, in the interest of fairness, I've discovered I do have some extra copies of the questions, so I'm just going to pass them down <laughs> so you can all have a couple minutes to, to prepare as, as other people and try to hit on different points. So I realize this question is, um, is a fairly general one. And, but I would like to give you all the opportunity to, to speak to it. Well, first I'd like to say in reading the statute recently, um, which I've done almost every day, I did notice something in the statute that's really interesting. There is, um, the CPA can provide housing for moderate income seniors. I had never even heard that phrase before, moderate income seniors. Hopefully, I, I will be a moderate income senior. So I, I think it's, it's great. It just You don't have to just be low income seniors, but moderate income seniors. So we could think about, we could have a plan to maybe someday build um, um, housing for moderate income um, seniors, which I'll probably be at some point. But I'll use this question. 
But I also agree that, um, I also know we're losing about 40 people a year, I've been told recently, uh, from this community. Our population number is going down about 40 a year. And I have friends who have um, children who graduated from college, and they're all everywhere in the country, and they say they can't afford to buy a house here. They can't afford to live here. Um, so we are, we're losing a lot of people, a lot of young people, and like I mentioned before, um, a lot of our young people are working in coffee shops, they're working for minimum wage. Um, you know, so I, hopefully we can continue to do something to provide housing for that population. And I think it is important to the community because it's the community's families that we, we could also keep here. Okay, uh, part one, section A. <laughs> uh, I think in terms of the first, first question, what does the community need? Does the affordable housing component of the CPA address that? I'm just going to have to echo. It's a simple answer, but echo what Mary said. And there's not much more than I can add to that. And then she hit it right on, uh, on the money. Uh, in terms of the, the other question, the interesting aspects of affordable housing, from a lawyer perspective, affordable housing is a fascinating area. And a lot of people don't know that the way the law is constructed is that people can come in if we haven't met our quotas, if we haven't done what we need to do, then they can force a project upon us. They have to go through the appropriate process uh, through the planning board or the zoning board, but you know, in some respects it's a take a little bit of proposition. With the CPC, I think what we see is we see creativity and innovation in addressing some of our problems. Uh, and affordable housing. And it's much better to tackle those as a community, much better to have those be community-initiated projects that people endorse, that people like, than have something forced upon us. So I think that's really the merit of it being included within the, the CPA and CPC. Um, and it, it's forged a lot of good partnerships, some that were existing and others that were created. And we need more of it. Um, what they all said Plus, um, when I first heard the term affordable housing, you know, it occurred to me that it was more community-based. You know, young families, seniors, uh, single mothers, you know, young starting out workers in the community. And so as I've learned about the CPA, and in the opening statement of the CPA plan, it refers to young families and seniors being able to live in the community um, in which they work and live. And so far, what the, the CPA has provided for is wonderful things like the Habitat for Humanity, where working families are able to move into the community in which they work and participate in the community in which they serve. Um, I'm hoping that going forward is that we'll be able to continue to support projects that will also include the seniors of the community which has not yet but will be addressed shortly, I hope. Thank you. Uh, this is probably the last question we have time for this evening. Um, Marlene, I'll start with you on this one. Since the inception of the Northampton CPA in January of 2006, the Community Preservation Committee has developed an application and review process with an eye towards fairness and transparency. What aspects of this process do you see as the strongest, and what, in your opinion, needs to be improved? The strongest um, point in the process, um, I like the way that the uh, presentation is staged out in uh, a series of weekly meetings, so that the first meeting, well, first the application is submitted, um, and then the committee takes gives itself some time to review it and look at it. Uh, then the applicant presents his application to the committee, um, and then they take time to review it. And then there's the public meeting, and um, I, I think that's a very good process. I think that the, the framers, uh, the original committee members, did a really good job in um, developing that process. And I, 
can't think of anything that I, I would say is wrong. If there's one thing I would like to see happen, I would like to see them, uh, the public meetings, when it gets to the point where you're closer to making the decision that they be televised. Um, and I, I do have a little problem with the fact that during this uh, election season when everyone has been so distracted, I would like to see there be a, um, a recess for the committee during elections because people aren't paying attention right now to what's happening in the CPC. And they're not paying much attention to to us either as candidates. I, I <laughs> ran into a friends, I said, do you see the article? Well, I saw your picture, but I didn't read it. Like, Nobody's reading it. Nobody cares about us, you know, so I think it, there should be a recess and we could amend the bylaws for a recess during the election. Um, uh, but as far as the process goes, I'm, I've been scrutinizing everything, as, as you know, and I can only see, um, the only criticism I have is towards the end of the project with the final accountings, maybe with the open bidding process. I know that will be a lot more work, but those are the only recommendations I have, an open bidding process and um, a better accounting at the end mm -hmm. um, in a way that will include more of the community. Uh, I guess I'd start by answering this question to acknowledge how much the CPC has accomplished in a very short amount of time. Uh, to get up to speed with the new law, which is extremely complex, and get in place the bylaws, the plan, to update that plan regularly, um, to establish criteria that are, are uh, I'm trying to search for the right word. Uh, which are extremely workable from a lawyer's perspective. It's hard to have criteria. They're black and white. And I think that the CPC committee, over the course of five years, has developed something that has the flexibility it needs for projects that come in that are largely apples and oranges and can't be evaluated in, in a vacuum. And so I applaud it for that effort. Uh, and it's given us a big bang for the buck. So I think it's more of a jumping off point. I think that there's obviously room for improvement in any process. I think of it more as kind of a CPC version 2.0 as we move into the, the future and the next generation and it's an opportunity to build on what we have, which is a great process to start. Before I decided to run for CPC, I kind of did the circuit riding going to planning board and zoning board and all the other boards to see what everyone else was doing. Uh, and I really think that the CPC uh, has hit a home run in terms of transparency. If you look at the process, if you look at the way that it promotes itself, if you look at all the opportunities along the way, plus the checks and balances, it's a really great start. So the two areas where I think as we look forward and we look into the future, we need to concentrate on are making sure that we are mindful that we can reserve money for the future that not all projects are created equally and there may be opportunities to reserve funds for the future. And the second is being mindful of the need for balance. Uh, you know, there have been some areas that have been more heavily funded than others and we just need to make sure that we're being fair in the distribution. Hey, um, thank you. To uh, uh, all those in the audience in television land, now, let me assure you that the CPC process is about as transparent a process as you can get. Is that we take very specific steps in our pro process to review the application, spend a great deal of time uh, putting all the data on the website. Now, herein lies the opportunity to uh, uh, to make some improvements is while all our meetings are open and please come 7 o'clock is the bewitching hour for families that's either just back from practice done eating into the homework so a large portion of the, our constituency no matter what they want to do can't participate and what I think we failed to do is really publish what's going on in the local papers so that people don't have to go to the Northampton government site, is that they're able to read on the articles, you know, a synopsis of what the applications are. That way they'll be much better informed or know when to call a member of the CPC and ask them specifically about the project. 
But all the deed is out there for everyone to see. You're welcome to stay till 10 o'clock as we <laughs> go through all the admin. But I highly recommend, and we'll work on this, getting more into the local newspaper so that all of you can be informed. Thank you. Well, being the fourth one, I don't have too much to add to what um, the other candidates have said. I completely echo what Dave said, and I just want to say that I think that uh, the people who wrote the 52-page CPA plan really clearly, clearly, clearly set out the process. It's, it's, it's a very well-designed process. I'm really impressed with it, and I think that the main challenge ahead, and I don't know if I'd say it's a weakness, but I think it's adherence to the procedures that have been set out already that, that we're sure that we follow what's been so beautifully set forth uh, as our foundation. And thank you all very much for your attention. Thank you to the candidates. sure that everybody knows, um, both on TV and here, because you're all going to go and vote on November 8th and do your civic duty. Um, the, the ballot question on the CPA can be a little confusing as it's worded. So if you are in favor of keeping the CPA in Northampton, you need to vote no. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> if you want to keep the CPA in Northampton, you vote no. If you want to repeal it, you vote yes. So uh, I don't want anyone to vote the other way than they intend. So I would like to thank um, NCTV for broadcasting this tonight. And if you missed portions or want to see it again, they will be playing it again um, between now and the election on November 8th. Thank you all for coming this evening and, uh, and becoming informed citizens. And thank you to the candidates and our panelists.